Hi, this is Leah Myers from Myers Design Studio, and today we're going to be comparing the Featherweight 221 sewing machine. My sister recorded these videos for you because she has this vast collection of sewing machines, and she so happens to have the Featherweight, the So Handy, the uh, first model of the Featherweight, and a white Featherweight. So please watch it till the end and and if you learn something let me know i'd love to see your comments in the comments page and i appreciate you watching so here's my sister with all the beautiful featherweights and the sew handy since i am talking about the sewing machine babies leah suggested that i um, show you a little bit more detail of each of these machines uh, i'm actually going to fire them up and sew and sew with them so you get a chance to see um, a little bit of the differences um, of each of them, um, sort of like the beginning inspiration for the featherweight, the first featherweight, um, and then the uh, end of the road for the featherweight in 1968. Okay. GE So Handy, which is the Osan, um, Osan featherweight So Handy. This is a machine from the late 1920s. Uh, there's lots of condition issues, obviously. This machine was so beat up. Um, I bought it during the pandemic. And um, a few things to look for if you're looking for this machine. It should come with the power cord. It's very special. And it should have the rear power cord that will go to the wall. If you don't have those, you may be in a world of hurt in terms of getting it to sew. A couple of things you do need. You do need the bobbin case. And you absolutely need the precious um, bobbins. Um, there are people in a Facebook group who may have one um, if they have any for these. Um, so if you do find one of these machines and it's in your budget, make sure you can find the um, bobbins and hopefully as much of the accessories as you possibly can. But um, I think any rotary accessory will work on this in terms of the foot. Um, a couple things to note, if you're working on these machines, uh, there is a bit of asbestos in them and they, it is the motor. There's, I believe, asbestos between the motor housing um, and the base of the machine. Um, you're not likely to crack it open, um, but if you do, there's some um, lots of caution there. Um, this machine itself, it moves away from you. So if you're going to sew with it, this knob normally on most of your machines you're familiar with will turn towards you. It took me a lot longer than maybe it should have to realize that I couldn't bring up the bobbin thread because it needs to go the other way. So these machines turn that way. And now that I'm more familiar with rotaries from this time period, almost all rotary machines from the, that were non-Singer machines, uh, the rotary machines all um, move the same direction. So if you have an oscillating machine or you have a um, vibrating shuttle, um, the wheels will all turn towards you. And if you have one of these older rotaries, they're gonna turn away from you. So the General um, Electric is so handy, the Osan, the White Family Rotary, the Wheeler and Wilson, I can go through the long list. Um, and you'll probably see some of those machines as we feature them on the channel. Let's go ahead and get sewing on this. I'm gonna do it one-handed, so forgive me for the mess here. Um, it takes a minute to get started. Um, the machine will turn the wheel um, the opposite direction, and it's a bit clanky and loud. Um, this has not gone a full restoration. I just was able to stabilize the paint recently, so um, I could proceed with other sort of restoration details um, carefully as, as always. Foot pedal is a bit funky too. It's hard to see it in here. Um, make sure you do have it. It's important if you want to sew with it. So here we go. All right, so let's bring up the press foot. Yep. Bring up the cute, tiny, little, little, tiny babies. All right, so we got it up. We're going to pull this out. We have a tiny thread cutter. It's so tiny. I'm going to take a little look at the stitches. So this is the uh, Singer, I'm sorry, the Asan GE Portable Electric from 1928. This 1933 Singer Featherweight, um, one of the first Singer Featherweights ever made. One of the first 10,000. Um, it's uh, got some cosmetic issues, but um, this is a very recent acquisition. Um, this is some crazing um, from dried up failing shellac and some other sort of crazing. Um, overall decals are in great shape. Um, this machine's gonna make a fabulous uh, um, restoration, gentle, safe restoration project. Um, these Singer Featherweights um, share such common bones and there's so much good information on the internet, um, wonderful places to get information in terms of how to surface them and how to 
really um, repair them and sort of you know keep these in the family if you have one of these if you're lucky enough. Um, I am going to go ahead and attempt to sew. This is 1933, so you saw this sew handy, which uh, was from the late 20s, portable electric. Um, you'll note the common feature, which is like the motor mounted in the back on the low portion of the bed, um, attached on the sewing beds incorporated into our sort of like the base of the machine. Um, I don't remember, I forget how to wind the bobbin on the other machine because I don't do it very often. Um, that machine doesn't get sewn with um, this one. Has just been acquired, so I don't have. I haven't really done a sewing with this either. Um, I have several featherweights in my collection, so this isn't really the one that I pick up when I um, want to play with the featherweights. And we'll go ahead and um, take a sew here, similar to the other machine. Um, this one actually turns towards you; it threads the other direction. Um, again, there's lots of information. I won't go over sort of how to thread it and how to use it. Um, you definitely have that covered. But in terms of seeing a 1933 in action, um, this is pretty much. Everything on it is original, as far as I can tell. It's got the same motor, same wiring. I am using a modern foot pedal. I don't really, um, I try not to rewire the old ones. I have a few of those and I do rewire them, but I don't trust um, electric parts that are nearly hundred years old. So uh, it's definitely safety first. Um, if you see anything at all cracked or broken on any of these machines, please do not plug them in. Um, don't even try to sew with them um, until you have the electric um, sorted out. This one's in great shape. I do need to do some other restoration on it, but um, for the most part, um, it's in really um, great shape to start out with. So let's go ahead and sew. All right. Pull it down, pull it up. Nice pull up. Also thread cutter. The Singer ones are terrible. I don't really use them. I usually use my scissors, but um, I'll go ahead and show you. This is 1933. Pretty dang awesome. Another Singer 221 from 1968. Uh, she is a bit of a shelf queen because I don't use her very often. Um, I find that the short extension bed and the sort of a little more delicate, uh, delicate paint in terms of chipping sort of keeps me from um, wanting to use it because it is in such good shape. Um, I don't use this machine very often. Um, I did wind a bobbin on it, which was super fun because uh, I don't do that very often, but it's mesmerizing to do. Um, this machine, I, like I said, it's not my favorite of the featherweights, and so I don't sew with it much, and actually <laughs> had to give her a little bit of a tune-up in order to get her sewing for you, so let's go ahead and give her a little stitch test. Uh, again, this is the last of the featherweights that were made. Um, there are lots of bits of plastic, some parts that um, may fall off. You can tell how flimsy this is. This is really challenging. I had to adjust the stitch length and I'm just kind of terrified that that's going to fall off. Um, so here we go, 1968 two, Singer 221. Battle of the babies. Baby battle. Um, fun part about this machine is that it actually has a built-in thread cutter in the presser foot. If I can find it. You can kind of see it back there. Yeah, back there. Um, not my favorite either. This actually feels very similar to um, other Singer um, of this time period. So if you have a late 60s, you have one of those Rocketeers, or you have one of those um, really cool... Um, 301s, I have a few of those in my collection. You'd see, like, they kind of have that same feel to them. The, the stitch plate is similar, kind of the feet feel the same, the knobs and the buttons, you know, all kind of feel very uh, 60s singers. So I um, hope you enjoyed that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Featherweight Soy Machine. That beautiful white one is so pretty. And the So Handy is it's really remarkable if you've noticed in the front underneath that little presser foot, that is where they um, do the stitch controller, the, the stitch, stitch length. If you notice it, that little lever was right there on that so handy. I, I thought that was interesting. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe and comment about this episode because I'd like to know if you have a featherweight, if you like it, or if, You'd like one, I don't know. <laughs> Just let me know what you think 
about the featherweight sewing machine. And if you enjoyed that episode, I appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Oh, before I forget, I am, let's put the featherweight over here. I am doing a new quilt and this one is called Spring Rain. And we're gonna do another modern one like this one. Spring Rain's coming up and I've got my fabrics all ready. So I hope you join me for that. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.